because I'm still trying to erase that movie, and I don't know how they finessed Elektra after that movie because that was just as bad. Remember when he's, I forgot he's fighting he on the Elektra. beast stuff with his cane, and then they're like flirty, flirt fighting? Yeah. You know, just in the middle. It was yeah. such the park. trash. I always wondered, I want to watch that movie. Like, what if we were just walking by and we saw this happening? Like, it'd get filmed now. It'd be viral. So it's like, kind of funny. Like, I don't know. A movie like that wouldn't get made now. Who do you call the police on? Huh? Who do you call the police on at that point? Is it like one of those social experiments? It's like, we're no, we'll just see. Of. Like, a chick is beating yeah. up a blind dude, but the blind dude's technically winning. <laughs> so what do we do here? <laughs> That's true. Oh, man. Social media-wise, back then, that would have been hilarious, dude what the hashtag would have been or something like that. Oh, that just man. would have been, it would have been podcast starting just because of that. But hey, I went on tangent. I got to remember that I'm going to get to say was my, my number one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Always come back, to, always come back to your, your go-to and your number one. It's the number one rule is podcast. Always right. go back to your, your go-to. So like you said, so I got to say Logan though. You guys watch Logan, right? Logan yeah. was sad, but really good. Yeah. Okay. That, that was it. I was big on Logan. But keep going. What, what we got? The the best Superman the best superhero movie. Best superhero. No, I mean, do you guys want to go into? Uh, are you ready for Electric Talk? Because I got I have some Raiders rants. I don't know. I guess, yeah, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was that's where I was trying to go. Yeah, because yeah, okay, we have to ask here. you. Like you said, we're all tied under the Raider Nation, so I want to know what do you make of the whole Raiders off season, and what do you make of their upcoming season? John Gruden. Okay, first I would say, which is a word you're not supposed to use with anybody. As you know, especially in relationships, anybody who knows, never use calm down, right? <laughs> but I would use like Aaron Rodgers, relax, or literally calm down when it comes to the money that we're paying John Gruden. Because a lot of that is, is the la- end of the contract, and it's going to be all in Nevada with no state tax. So a $100 million contract becomes like an $80 million contract, which puts them around where Belichick is and the, the higher paid coaches. So first off, calm down about the money factor, Okay based on the charisma and based on at least the hope it brings us as fans. And I think at least, you know, people in the building, I'm absolutely okay with John Gruden signing, you know, the way they played last year and the way they, that Jack Del Rio was allowing players to control the locker room in a negative way. Like you just can't have that. He's yeah. a professional coach. Like, I love, I love Jack. Yeah. But same. Just, he's, he's a local. It's just can't, same. Can't, he's getting paid too much, man. It can't be done. Same, same. He did his job. He, he, he stirred the ship the right way, but it was just time for a new captain. Exactly. The issue, the thing I worry about, though, is is, is Reggie, you know, obviously Reggie McKenzie, the GM, who we owe so much credit to. He's based on his financial dealings with the, with the cap. He's an elite GM. It's been great. We have no dead money, dude. Yeah. We have no dead money yep. as the Raiders. I used to have nightmares about all the dead money we, we had. Now like we have none. 30 or 40 million. Like, it was ridiculous. We literally had, like, yeah. half the salary cap. It was Jamarcus stupid. who? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Lamar exactly. Woodley. We don't even want to get into that. I was on. I was on the Calvin, Calvin Johnson side. But, uh, you know, I don't, I guess I was, I guess I don't want Reggie, you know, it sounds like he's not even a GM anymore. I don't really know what he's doing, that he's just controlling the salary cap, sure, but I want Reggie to stay around. He, he, he played for us, you know, I want, he's a Raider. I want him to stay in organization, and I just worry that John having so much control, is Reggie going to be like, hey, well, I can go somewhere else, I can actually be the GM again. What do you guys think about that? Have you seen that, you know, issue well, coming up at all? Well, that's been our biggest, you know, qualm against it is, yeah, John Gruden represents this great symbol of like our glory days, but at the same time, he wasn't that great in Tampa, and he especially wasn't that great when he had personnel control. And so for him, for him to sure. just get everything, is like, okay, well, do we really need to do all that? Yeah, but I, yeah, I hear what you're saying. At the same saying. time, at the same time, it, it's hard to fire Del Rio for anybody else but him. I know. And he's just on an extension, and he's from the area. Exactly. He's from I mean, the area, yeah. I just he would have stayed for a long time. I just think it's really sad that they're pretty much just using Reggie as like a lame duck. It's like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to say they neutered him, but they really kind of depleted his power and his role. It's like, he's he's um he's he's war machine when a uh, Falcon comes around. And Captain America, <laughs> that's that's what he is. <laughs> and and well, even better, you would say he's Falcon once his wings get shot. <laughs> he's no, he's he's like, Falcon. He really can't do anything, bro. Yeah, he's Falcon. I'm just gonna do regular shooting to turn my feet. What? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's Falcon when Bucky comes around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's my friend. Oh yeah, you, you're cool too. And my other issue yeah. with Gruden is is he thinks he's still in the media, man. Every week we're getting a new quote from him. 
every week he's saying something and it's like subbing Obi, poor Obi. Like you can't have this culture where you're holding players accountable, but then at the same time you're calling them out in the media because now you're just opening Pandora's box and everyone's going to be calling everyone out in the media. That's what I think. I get I get that. I get that, but Obi, we haven't seen anything from Obi, and he's still not ready. That's and true. eventually, as you know, it's a business. These guys got to get on the field. So if, if it's, you know, think about last year, Conley, he ended up, what, doing an IR for basically shin splints? Yeah. And, but in, in the middle <laughs> of the OTH, he said, no, I, I don't have any shin splints. I don't know what How that's saying. How do you saying. break your shin? So it feels like a gunshot, bro. It feels like a gunshot, and someone just takes a nail. You got to get hit by a diesel and... truck. <laughs> no, no, it's like a nerve thing, dude. It's it's crazy. It's uh, like I've had shin splints. Like I literally had someone roll into my leg, and I thought my leg was broken, and like I got up and okay, walked it okay. off. But it's okay. and for a corner. Oh man, all it takes is that, and then you just can't feel anything below your shin. And well, I guess the fact uses. is that. He denied it, right? Because he, you know, because like I just did, like I just, I made, I made an <laughs> ignorant uh, impression about what shin splints are. You've gone through it; it sounds awful, right? So I empathize with him. It's all good. He said it wasn't that, and then it ends up being that he goes on IR for that. So I'm just saying, be honest. So I feel like Bruden is like, hey, over, you didn't, you know, you know, maybe you know, we're not there in the facility. That's what's tough. You know, saying we're not there in the facility, we're not there. You know, when they're when they're parking and walking in, or they're leaving. What are they talking about? Maybe OB hasn't been putting in the time in the rehab room that he thinks he should. I mean, sometimes I think the media they use that to kind of get a fire into that. So with that, I'm okay with. You know, for John doing the stuff with the media and the way he, you know, the verbiage he uses, which still sounds like Monday Night Football. I don't have any problem with that because I look at it and I think, you know, what would one of the problems we talked about the dead money, but the old Raiders was our image, right? And especially our image on the league, which is the image of the people who work in the NFL, the refs. Yeah. How many calls did we not get for 15 years, man? Now I think with John, who's gonna, he's not gonna yell at everybody like the FX you'll watch on YouTube. You know, he's he's gonna be, he's gonna be <laughs> easier to get with because he understands he can't do that, right? This new generation of kids, each person needs to be handled differently. Some guys want to be yelled at, some guys want to be coddled, right? I think he's gonna understand, or I, I would assume he's taking this gig, he's gonna understand how to separate those kind of people and personalities and how he approaches them. Plus, plus, he, refs. plus well. he's paid enough to call out the refs and eat the fine without worrying about it. That so. is true. <laughs> he should be the only guy just constantly attacking the refs every game. And, like, the, the yeah, players you know, will was, see that. What? Cr- Keep going. I said the players will see that. They'll be like, oh, okay, he's, he's got our back when we don't get calls, especially against the Patriots. Yeah, absolutely. Are we playing it in this year at the end of the schedule? No. Nah, I don't, even want to think I don't about think it. so. All right, so nah, okay. So my, my well, I, I, need, I have a few more rants though on the Raiders. I'm not. We're go ahead. Just two more. Go ahead. I, wrote these, I wrote these down. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, he. I'm let's always go. the guy. What's up? No, I said let's go. Go. Okay. And be honest, listen. I'm not usually a guest. I'm usually the one hosting. So if I'm doing bad, that's part of part of why. Uh, oh, is that uh, Cold Miller? You know, I always want a big tackle in the middle rounds or trade back and get a big tackle. I'm always about that. You know, just let's get as many huge tackles as you can. They'll start working on it eventually. Like you think about, you know, when Bruden was good, who we have? We had uh, Barrett Robbins. We had Lincoln Kennedy. Um, there were some guys that were huge that could really help us move the pile. I'm fine with Colt Miller. I'm not fine with what they got to moving five spots back. Yep. You Thank knew you, that Arizona was going for a quarterback. You knew it. I would rather. And a franchise quarterback. Take... And then they scooped yeah, exactly. Kirk in the second round. I would rather just take Colt Miller out of spite to the, to the Cardinals at 10 then just get a, what, a, a third, a sixth for him, for those five spots. They should have at least got a second. So I am extremely unhappy with the compensation. And then I'm unhappy with the way, what they did with that. You have a third rounder for Mark Davis in his contract year, so we're going to have a guy for a year, and then we're going to have to pay him around, what, $7 million a year if he does well, or most likely as how it's been with the Raiders, as it will be for Rashard Melvin, how, how it has for Philip Wheeler a long time ago. And I'm a great <laughs> year with us. Oh. And they're going to get paid somewhere else. I'm not happy with the Martinez conversation, what we got for, what we did. I'm just not happy with that 10 to 15 trade. I'm not happy with what we did with the third round pick. So I'm pretty, if, if you know, if John called the podcast or he talked to you guys or tweeted us, I'd be like, hey, what the fuck, man? <laughs> and they passed on Edmonds, which really pissed me off. I was like, he's the linebacker you need and you should want. No, you don't want him. Well, that was that was bad. What really broke my heart, guys, was Derwin we passed James. on Derwin James. Yes. He's just going to be a bulldog. He's going to be against us. Slot receivers. Who gets him, dude? The Chargers. I'm already, I am already had the image in my mind. And James, sex car. And James with the pick on car. And it's just like, 
Bro, my, the division got better. My family wore Chargers gear to the Super Bowl party, and I just couldn't say anything because they scraped us twice. <laughs> it was horrible. It was a horrible day. It's horrible. It's embarrassing. Yeah, it was. It was. It was tough, man. That's where, so. That's where I'm at, I'm, and I'm saying, and also, what do I have to say? Gruden is as pricey as you think. Back to make or break you. Okay, then I got one more thing, and that's um, I'm a huge fan of Derek Carr. He's from Bakersfield. I'm from Bakersfield. We hey. all love football there. We all play in high school. We all do as much as we can. You guys know two days. You guys know summers. You know the smell of the fresh cut grass. So we understand that culture, right? That's yeah. part of why we love. That's part of why we love football. This is a make or break year for Carr, man. I feel like he has gotten amazing PR because he's a nice guy, and we haven't had a quarterback for such a long time. But I am tired of seeing Carr only throw to the outside, the outside of the line. I Thank need you. to use the middle of the field Thank more because that's where you fuck. I mean, sorry, that that's where you fall can win games is the middle of the field. Okay? <laughs> and he did, he doesn't do it enough. He doesn't do it enough. And so. he has Cook at at tight end. Who's practically a receiver. Yeah. So there's no real exactly. excuse. Okay. What about Christian Hackenberg? Is that someone we see <sighs> he, three years from now, or do we try to build him up? No, nah, he's trash. He I don't trust anybody with the name Hacken in their name. <laughs> okay. We're still That's trying to figure out. P- I don't trust Penn State quarterbacks. Name the last good one. If Michael we, Robinson, he's a foot he's a fullback turned NFL analyst now. If hey we, guys, but as Raider fans, Matty Ice, man. If Matty Matt Matty M line. Yeah, he had some good games for us. Ah, uh, not this guy. Oh, Are you that guy on Twitter? Because <laughs> there's no, Matt McGloin really fans so bad, on Twitter. <laughs> you mean Matty Icy, yeah. Icy Hot? Because that's what he was. All right, so real, burn, though. real quick, Connor, before we let you go, I need a couple things. First okay. of all, we know you're a fantasy expert. You're you're one of the, the, the fantasy old heads that I know. So yeah, I'm going to need... I'm gonna need your 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 boom pick for this year, who who you really love, and who you think is gonna be a bust. So I'm putting you on the spot. Okay. I need that, and then also I need to know when's your next show so people can listen. Okay, and yeah. I need to know what movie I need to see next. So those are three uh, things that I need uh, from you. Also, I need your um comeback player of the year in fantasy. Comeback thirty. Okay, I have some fantasy. I don't want to go too far into fantasy yet because I'm thinking this has gone pretty well. I'd like to be on the show again. I'd like to have you guys on my show. Fantasy is going to be a whole season. We're going to get into it. We're really going to dig in, right? So we're going to do this again. We're going to do a lot more fantasy. You guys agree to that? Okay. All right. Gonna yeah, right now, good. And we're good. going to do like episodes sounds of it because we love fantasy. Right? That's how most of us met the three of us, right? So fantasy falls and brought us together. Fantasy football, number one, wait on a QB this year. Okay. I'm always the guy who takes A-Rod in the second or third. A lot of people will take him in the first round. He's an amazing player, but there are a lot, a lot of quarterbacks this year that I like. Okay, Lamar Jackson, a seventeenth, uh, you know, seventeenth rounder. Flacco could get benched around week six in fantasy based on the rushing points you get. He could be just as good as your Aaron Rodgers who just passes right. So look at guys like Lamar Jackson. I love Russell Wilson this year. They're building the team around him. He's going to get as many pass attempts as he fucking wants. Rashard Penny is going to be a great player out of the backfield for him. I'm really high on Russell Wilson. If you can pair him with a Doug Baldwin, get him like the 8th or ninth. I really like the value there. And also based on that division, the weather really isn't bad in the NFC West. So you don't got to worry about environments a lot. A lot of the offenses are really good in that division, the Rams, the Niners, the Cardinals we don't know about, but it's going to be high-scoring games. So I like the Seattle Seahawks. The bust for me, speaking of the Cardinals, I'm sticking to the NFC West, is I'm not, I'm not touching David Johnson again. One what? reason was I had a buddy – he knows fantasy just as much as me. Been in the same league for 15 years. He's like, dude, don't draft anybody who goes vegan. After they go vegan, that next year they always get hurt or have a bad year. He broke his wrist in the Damn. first game. I was, I, I was really falling for that. Luckily, yeah. I picked up three months every league. That really hurt, man. But I'm not touching David Johnson. I kind of want David they're Johnson. Gonna the they're gonna stack the box, man. We don't know if they're gonna be able to complete a pass. What if he's just stealing like a third round? Open for him. Oh, if you can get him in the third round, sure, but I don't think he's going to go in the third round. I see, at least in my league, I go by my experience, I see David Johnson, worst case, go in the end of the second round, the middle of the second round. Yeah. Because his, you know, dual threat ability, he's still a beast. Right? Kick return. That's kind of my guy to watch out for. In terms of my Mr. Consistent, the guy I'm taking, he has the eighth pick, which is what I love, eighth through tenth pick, right? I'm taking Melvin Gordon. He gives me as carries as he needs. Austin, mm. got Austin Eckler as the backup is really not a featured back. He doesn't have anybody trying to take the ball from him. As long as you say it's healthy, I love Melvin Gordon this year. And comeback player of the year, I'm going to be biased, but Don't I'll be better no. prepared to get more of a, a lower rounder next time we actually do fantasy. But for me, just off the bat, I would say Amari. 
I mean, Amari yeah. Scooby in the third round. Wow, that was shocking. If I get him in the seventh, sixth or seventh, I love that pick, dude. You, would, you wouldn't take Crabtree just to spite him? What's that? What you, wouldn't take, you wouldn't take Crabtree uh, just to spite him?